Hello, this is Frank with Swarner and Son Flies. Uh, we're going to be tying a little egg sucking, egg eating, cradle robbing crayfish. It's a little buggy looking fly, uh, not too tough to tie and uh, fairly simple materials to get. So in the, in the back here, in the rear, the uh, eggs, these are actually just glass, small glass beads from a craft store. And they're just slid down a piece of 25 pound monofilament. Um, then in the rear here, all these long hackles are all uh, ringtail pheasant rump feathers. So what you want in the rear is a large uh, ring neck rump feather, then a medium one in the middle, and a smaller one at the front. And then in between those sections is uh, ice dubbing and pheasant tail color. And on the top of the body here, we have two hen pheasant feathers uh, anywhere on the body. They just have real nice uh, modeling to them. And, They'll be tied flat so it gives it the kind of the carapace look for a crayfish. And the thread we're using is just a six sot uh, uni thread. So here we go. Get her hook in the vise. Start at the front here near the eye. We'll go way back down the shank. About to the the hook point, maybe a little bit further than the hook point. And I'm going to go forward again, the midpoint of the body here. So I'm going to take a piece of 25 pound monofilament, nothing special. There's not uh, this has nothing to do with holding the fish or anything like that. It's just uh, used as a means to carry the beads. So here's the beads. They just come in like a little plastic tube. Um, check glass beads. So and there's all kinds of colors. But again, these are glass, so they're not going to last forever. Um, they will fade in the sunlight and they will you know, crack if, when you're fishing if you hit um, your fly hits the rocks. So you want to want to watch that. So basically just uh, take the mono, slide it right through the center of the beads. And it's up to you how many you want to put on. Um, four, six, eight, whatever it is. Uh, I'm going to put on six for this guy I'm going to try to put six on if I can get things to work here one more alright so I'm just going to Bend that mono down, bend it around and tie it to the other side of the uh, hook shank here. With one or two turns, then I can uh, pull that mono and make it tight and see where I'm at as far as my tying point. And here I'm going to move it back a little bit so they're both even. Alright, so that'll act as a little egg cluster, a little hot spot, and something for them to, the steelhead to think it's something for them to eat. That mono off, clip it. It's up to you if you want to put glue on there now or anything like that. But there's really not going to be that much pressure, you know, pulling on the eggs or anything like that. So they should stay in just fine. Take some slice stubbing, put a little bit on the thread. Just want to make a little, just a little ball of it there, right at the rear. So then my thread should be uh, hanging just in front of the uh, hook point. So now I'm going to take my large uh, feather I want to fold those, bend those barbs back the opposite way. That way I have the tip exposed. I can tie it in by the tip. Move the thread forward out of the way a little bit. I'm going to stroke all these fibers back they're flowing towards the rear and I want to keep doing that as I wrap this pheasant rump feather again this is the large one get that all wrapped in tie off that stem So it's already starting to look uh, 
you know, buggy and fishing looking with uh, these, you know, nice long flowing hackles that'll act as, you know, maybe the claws, the legs, whatever, but it just has nice action in the water. So next we're going to make a body segment out of the ice dubbing. Again, this is pheasant tail color. You can use, doesn't have to be flashy. You can also use regular old hairs you're dubbing or a tan or um, just something with a tan color. Or even a brown color would be good for this color combo. that forward to about the middle of the shank there. So next we'll take our medium pheasant rump feather, pull those fibers back, trim this tip a little bit, go ahead and tie that in. Again just wrap it around the shank. all the while pulling those fibers towards the rear wrap that stem off, give it a trim and we're going to add some more ice dubbing and make another body segment it's possible what I do to try to keep like the crayfish shape since they're a little bit you know, a little bit more pronounced at their, their front where the claws are. I'll make the rear body section a little bit fatter, uh, a little more uh, bigger in diameter, I guess you could say. But I don't think it's too critical to do that. Get up to the front. And then we'll get our small... Pheasant rump feather. Again, tied in by the tip. I'm going to use my uh, hackle pliers for this one since the, the stem broke when I was pulling some of the fluff off the bottom. Again, pull the fibers towards the rear as you go forward. all those fibers, tie that stem down, trim the excess, and the next thing I do um, is trim these first two uh, leg parts, mouth parts, uh, whatever you want to say. I trim those two flat, that way it's not uh, propping up the, the hen pheasant feathers that we're going to lay on top here. So. It's got a nice flow to it, nice buggy look. You can play around with a lot of colors with this fly too. And the browns work, you know, very well for the steelhead up there. But so do uh, you know the blacks, even even a different color like a purple one with uh, like a pink egg or orange egg seems to work as well. So next we have two hen pheasant feathers. So I love the modeling on these, as you can see. So one's a little larger and one's a little bit smaller. So what I'm going to do is tie them in at the same time so I have them so the tips are staggered. So it has a little different look to it and maybe a little different flutter in the water. Get those tied in. Sometimes those stems don't like to cooperate. This time they worked out pretty good and that's sitting pretty darn nice. Them, double them back, wrap that off a couple times. Again, now those stems aren't going to pull out at all, they'll have to break. Work on shaping the head and covering up some of the butt ends, and then we can do a whip finish.